It's like skating on a horse. It was beautiful to watch. That's a great way to put it. And you know who came out on top? One of my favorite Rainers. He might be the honoriest one of the bunch. We're talking about the great Casey Deary. He came down and called me. Describe the feeling, man, out of everything that you've won in your life, describe the feeling of last year walking into Globe Life Field for the very first time. Uh, that, was, that was the most uh, unique experience that I've ever had. So I, I grew up a baseball fan. You know, my mother has a, a sickness uh, with baseball. Our, <laughs> our living room where the TV was, the light fixture was a baseball, the door handles were a baseball, the, all the baseball memorabilia, I mean, that, the whole deal. So for me to get to have that opportunity was, uh, it was, it was life changing for sure to have those kind of opportunities. And I, I got there early to really soak it all up and make sure my horses were comfortable and all of that stuff. But I can remember that first opportunity we had to get in there. I was the first one through that gate in the outfield and I'm walking around and I turn my camera on and I'm videoing for my mother and uh, I have a my, both of my brothers are fairly athletic not quite as good looking but they're pretty athletic <laughs> and uh, so my younger brother had some college offers to play baseball and that kind of fun stuff so I'm I'm walking around in there showing the inside the stadium view for my mother and I sent it to her and I said I bet you never thought it was going to be your fat son that was playing in here so that's awesome <laughs> it, it was the, the whole thing was just a it was a little overwhelming I mean to walk around in there and that thing was empty right it was really really quiet right um, it, it was a pretty awesome experience yeah, and so the people start piling in you can just feel the energy oh. in the in that stadium um, so describe that feeling riding in to actually compete and show in that environment? You know, this, this was a unique thing for us because we're used to going to horse shows where everything is set up to be prime for the exhibitor to show their horse, right? The ground's right. pristine, the start time's right on, you know, you know there's a drag ever so far, you can calculate about when you go, but that whole deal you kind of had to fly by the seat of your pants a little bit. You know, there was so much unknown about how the horses would handle it, the way the ground got prepared. So there was a little bit of an edge there, but for me, I have always, um, I don't want to say thrived, but I really do. I like the pressure. I don't care if it's horse showing or playing golf or whatever it is, I like the pressure. So right. those situations that, that are, are, instances that I really enjoy um, but to run through those gates and I, I I don't know what the final number was I had heard 19,000 to 20,000 mm -hmm. you know that's unheard of more than most horse shows yeah oh yeah I mean like a, a major event if they have 4,000 5,000 spectators I think I think Taylor got 5,000 or so out there to run for the million in South Point uh, that was crazy yeah so you, you mentioned the pressure, so um, Andrea Papani throws up a big score, 230 and a half before you go. Are you aware of that being on the scoreboard? And if so, like how do you handle that pressure? I, I honestly, I don't remember what order that we went in and I don't ever put any merit in what my buddies do. You know, like they're gonna go do their best, they're gonna put their run together, and my job is to make sure that I put that horse in the best situation to show what he's capable of. Mm. And if it happens to shake out that event, great. If not, I'm gonna, I don't ever let what they do dictate what I do. That very last stomp, did you know, I see you like pointing to the sky, did you know that you had won it at that point? No, no I didn't. And I, you know, for me personally, um, I feel like what I have to do for a living, what I get to do is, you know, 
strictly God's blessing. So I'm going to give him glory when it's good or when it's bad. So the me pointing up is me saying, thank you, Father. So that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with how my run went. Mm. I've said thank you, Father, with some with some two oh nothings too. But <laughs> it's uh, you know it's just a, for me. I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to do this that I want to make sure I don't ever take that for granted. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, let's go back to 2020. Speaking of some not so good times, uh, <laughs> the NRHA Futurity. You mark a 2023 to finish third on downright amazing and you also finished fifth that same year all while wearing a neck brace not one of my smarter moments <laughs> my mother would confirm that yeah but talk about that like the grit and just determination to get those horses shown through that adversity well you know i feel like i'm hired to do a job for those people and they spend a lot of money and their hopes and dreams are up on it too. Um, I, you know, for those of the, the people that don't know the story, I had a horse that kicked through the panel on my walker. Um, and generally there's people there in the saddling area, in the walker area all the time. And I just happened to be in the right spot to be the one to find him. So, I go in to help, and as he's, he's sitting there like a mule with that panel on his leg, and so I'm thinking I can just catch him, we're going to hold him, we're going to take the panel down, make sure he's not in a wreck, and as I walk in there, he gets up and comes running at me with that panel still on his leg, so he's coming at a high rate of speed, that's not a lot of area there, so I jump across the fence like Superman. <laughs> And as I'm sideways in the air, the arm of the walker hits me in the head hmm. and sticks a bolt through a brand new straw hat, which <laughs> obviously was worthless when I got done. But he, I landed like a yard dart mm -hmm. on my head. And I don't know how bad I'm hurt at the time. All I know is both arms and both legs curled up like this and everything locked up tight as it could get. And I'm sitting there and the first one to get to me is one of the guys that works from me, uh, for me. And he's saying in Spanish, that's a lot of blood, boss. That's a lot of blood. And I'm going, it's fine, it's fine. And so we go in, we get it all checked out. They do the MRI, the CAT scan. The guy comes in and says, okay, well, your neck's broke. Mm. I said, okay. Uh, what do we do? Our biggest competition is next week. And he says, oh, you're not competing. You're out. And I'm sitting here thinking, I walked in here. I mean, you didn't have to put me in a wheelchair to get me in. So, obviously the conversation is, what do we do? Yeah. Well, this is Friday before we leave for the Reign of Turdy the next week. Well, any of the guys that are capable of showing these horses are already mounted. They're already set. And so here I have a great set of horses with wonderful customers that have spent a lot of money to get there, and stupid me gets in a wreck on the horse walker. So, I, I laid in bed. Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday. And Monday, I said, okay, we need to see if I can do it. So Downright Amazing was the first one that I rode. And I just slowly checked all the parts to see if I could do it without wetting myself. And all the parts worked, and it was really, really miserable, but I could do it at a slow speed. Um, and so we said, okay, we're gonna go for it. You know, what are my options? It was pretty excruciating, the whole process. Certainly not something that I'd like to do, but when you have a horse that's as special as downright amazing, I mean, I couldn't take that opportunity away from him. What is it that you love so much about this sport? You know, it, it not to sound silly, but it kind of chose me. So when I was younger, I went to a reining clinic that a man named James Davison did and I was so impressed. I was in the 4-H at the time, and you know, that deal you show every event, you do all of it. And he came with a reining horse, and he was able to demonstrate with his reining horse how he could do each one of those events. And maybe it wasn't the best loper like a pleasure horse, and maybe he wasn't the fastest barrel horse, but he literally could do anything he wanted to do. And I thought, if a guy could teach one that, you could do anything you want to. 
you know, you can make a rope horse, you can make a calf horse, you can make a jumper, whatever you want to do if you can show them those basics. So that's really where it started. And then when I moved to Weatherford, I wanted to do the cow horse stuff, but I'm just, I'm nowhere near as talented as those guys are. So there's really not a lot of hope for me being good at that. And so in this location here in Weatherford, there was a big draw from basically everybody in the Fort Worth and South area. I was the closest one. So this business really started as a, a lesson barn. Mm. I mean, it, there's, there's earlier days and they weren't even that much earlier. I can remember in 2012, I showed in, maybe it was 11. I showed in Fort Worth and I had 34 horses there and one of them was for me to show. Mm. All the rest of them were rookie horses, but this area had, it was so convenient. I had so many of those riding lessons that came in. Right. So, I mean, it really did kind of choose me. And then 2005 was my first trip to the open finals and business kind of took off from there. But this lifestyle is not something that you can sit back and take your foot off the gas and coast through. You have to right. either be going at it or going away. In the show pen, you seem to have this polished grittiness about you whenever you show. Where does that come from? I'm confident in my horses. I mean, I, I put the hours in at home here. Um, I trust those horses. I trust the work I've done on those horses. And I also know that my value is not determined on how I do at the horse show. So that's my job. I love doing it. But I know if it doesn't go well, I'm still serving a bigger purpose. So I don't stress over what happens in the arena. I mean, that's in my mind i'm no different than the guy that's setting the shelves up at walmart i have a job to do and a, i'm going to go do the best i can and it's not a it's not a stressful thing for me to go do what i practice all day long it's been said many times that certain horses find trainers um, at the right time and those those horses put that trainer on the map and uh, i think it can go the other way too though i think certain horses may find the right trainer and that trainer puts that horse oh sure on the map, you know, and it's just like right time, right place, mm. right person, right horse, you know, and so I want to use that as a segue into Downright Amazing. Just some of the fun fact stats for those keeping score at home. Downright Amazing finishes third at the 2020 NRHA Futurity, 2022 run for a million, reigning open shootout champion, 23 uh, level four open champion, NRBC level four open classic champion, and then of course last year, 20, in 2023, the American Performance Horseman um, individual reigning champion marking a 231 and a half. What is it that makes him so special? He's a soldier. He's, he is talented, but he likes his job and he shows up and he does the same thing over and over again. Um, there's, you know, there's not anything that's hard for him. He's not the the greatest athlete I've ever had, but his work ethic is so good and his brain is so good that the places where, you know, you wish you had a little more fire here or there, he, he overcomes it because he shows up and he does his job. He's a, you know, like, like you saw earlier, he's a very natural stopper. He's a big stopper. And in our deal, you're always gonna have at least three of those and sometimes four stops in a pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, we're never going to have more than two turns, right? A left turn and a right turn, left circle, right circle. So if you're going to bank on something, the big stopper's always got an advantage, and he has always done that. He's a very, very natural stopper. But that horse just doesn't rattle. Show day will be here soon. Um, a 2024 American Performance Horseman, March 8th. How much are you looking forward to showing at Globe Life Field once again? I can't wait. And I, I honestly, I've done this a long time and we go a lot. We are on the road a lot. And there are horse shows that I go to because it's my job and I want to give those horses the opportunity, but I'm not as excited about going to. But that deal is a blast. It's one of the few times throughout the year yeah. that everybody can kind of yeah, migrate to the same location. It's a blast and, and it's, you know, it's the top of the top in all of the events. So, right. you know, it's not like 
it's not like you're going to go watch the cutting and you're going to see somebody just struggling to get through. I mean, you're you're going to get to go watch the, you know, the Nolan Ryan's of the event or are yeah. playing there. So I think about it, and I keep saying this: it's like an all-star game. Like yeah. watching an all-star game. Yeah. Absolutely. To watch a Casey Deary and Andrea Fapani, Corey Cushing, uh, Lloyd Cox, all in the same arena. Yeah, and then the horses that you'll have under you, it's just, it gives me chills thinking I'm, about it. it and yeah, that's, you're right. When you're standing at that gate cheering your buddies on, it's, it's uh, I mean, you feel like you're watching history happen when you get Truly. to watch it. It's, it's Truly. really, really cool. Who was, um, in the cow horse and in the cutting, who was your favorite to watch last year? Oh, man, I, you couldn't pick one. I, you know, Chris and Sarah and I are, are close, so it was easy for me to, be on Chris's team, which was, you know, it was a, the whole time we were cutting up. Uh, so it's easy for me to cheer for those guys because yeah. I know them so well. But you, you can't. You'd be better off to just close your eyes and throw <laughs> a dart to pick what your favorite was because there wasn't a bad one in the bunch. What does it take to win the American Performance Horseman? It, it takes the best run of the night. That's what it takes. I mean, there's there's no way to say you got to this or you got to that. I mean, you got five of the best that are bringing the best stock they can get, and it, it, it with the reining, it's so precise. I mean, you can be if I'm supposed to shut off here and I do it here, that's the difference of me winning it or being last. That being said, what's the plan to have the best run going into this year's American? So I can basically tell you what I did last year. Um, I actually went to NRS and I mentally set up the specs of what that arena that we'd be showing in because that NRS pin is big enough that I could make the adjustments, right? So in my mind, I'm using, you know, that marker on the wall and this sign down here. And I ran that pattern, the configuration, the circle structure in those boundaries to make sure that I could control that because it was an odd shape. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's it's not a it's not a situation where you have a balanced arena like we have at all of our events, and those horses have a tendency to use the wall to kind of shape that circle and pull here or pull there. So I had to make sure that that horse was going to let me make those adjustments. So we did that, and then I spent as much time as I could in there. And once we got there, if it was open for us to be in there, I was in there. Mm. I settled the cattle on downright amazing. I mean, I, I stayed in there the whole time. I let that horse acclimate to the lights and the spots, and he watched Cheryl Crow perform with the fireworks going off. So by the time it was his turn to go, he'd heard all the noise from the cutting. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I just made sure that I acclimated my horse as much as I could possibly do it. And then I made sure I didn't ask him for more than he was going to fire and give me. How would you define your style, your show style, in one word? <laughs> I don't, it, it could vary so much, but I would have to say willing. I mean, I, I feel like my horses, when I go in there, they go where I point. Hmm. There's, there's, if it's going well, right, there's, you don't see me do a lot. Yeah, I, I, the biggest compliment that I've had from spectators or judges is that it looks like that horse could do it without me. And that's my goal is for, to take me completely out of the way. I feel like after last year and what Teton Ridge did, it's attracted even more people. I feel like more people will be there this year. What is it that you want spectators to know um, that are going to be coming in and watching this competition? I would say the biggest thing that I took away from my experience last year that I would like to relay to people is this is not about a horse show. This is not your normal go and, you know, watch a dozen or two or whatever. It's an entertainment deal. This is no different than buying a ticket to a concert. Mm. So if you're going in with the idea of I'm going to watch this horse and study this, you're kind of you're you're approaching it backwards a lot of those tickets are a long way off it's a little hard to see at places but the excitement and the the being a part of it is is the way a guy needs to approach it i mean it's you need to go for the entertainment value of it not as much the educational part right i mean mm -hmm. the the 
the reigning nerd is going to walk in there with their score sheet and sit through four days of 500 horses go and practice their marking and did I get my you're not going to be able to do that here I mean this is this is about watching five of the greatest horses in each event go compete in a team format that uh, is is strictly uh, entertainment what does success look like for Casey Deary at this year's American you know, for me, it's like all the other guys are going to tell you that I want to win. <laughs> I, uh, I can I can tell you this: I have never been a watch guy. I, the only jewelry I have ever worn is this ring, and I haven't taken it off in 22 years. But that Rolex is really cool. <laughs> it is really cool. And, and not being a watch guy, I had no idea what that thing is worth. Yeah. But holy smokes. What else did you get last year for winning that I don't thing? have a clue, but that watch is awesome. <laughs> like, I, I don't, honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember if there were, I honestly don't think there were any other parts to it. You didn't get a ring or a buckle or a... No, it seemed like... Saddle? No, there was no saddle, no buckle. They spent all their money on the, the watch. No, exactly. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, that watch, I don't know if you know anything about watches. I'm not a watch guy either, no. You can't go buy that watch. You you physically cannot walk into a Rolex store and say, I want that one. You have to be on a special list. Mm. To go, at least at the time, you had to be on a special list to get it. So there, there are... There are three of those watches in existence right now, right? And and they're different colors. So really, the, the blue and red one that I have is a one of a kind and I have my my good friend and customer Rob Curtis that owns She's Out of Your League that read downright amazing has a watch collection that's probably worth more than my ranch <laughs> right I mean he's a serious watch guru and he has coveted that watch oh that's awesome and so man. I make sure I get it out when he's around <laughs> I actually I do the same thing to Andrea too which is fun you can put this in or take it out whatever but we were we were in uh Vegas. Andrea Fapani. Yeah, I call him Frappuccini. Okay. <laughs> it, we were in Vegas at the South Point and he was talking to somebody about about watches and I was turning a horse right there close and I said uh, like like this one and I I said I said is it too soon? And he uh, He's, he's so quick too, right? I mean, he was really good. And he had just had a great horse show the week before in Tulsa. And he said, no, he said, I'll just take some of the 300,000 I won last week and I'll buy my own. <laughs> but that's a... Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that, that's been a lot of fun, so. That's awesome. He'll be coming back to this year's American. He too, will, right? yeah. And he's always, I mean, that, that guy doesn't even need a, he doesn't need all four legs on one. If he's got three legs, he's capable of beating you. <laughs> How do you handle the pressure, right? So you're coming coming in, um, number three, previous champion at the American. How do you handle the expectations, the pressure, um, whether it's from yourself or from others? I, you know what? I just go do the best I can do. I, I, I try to set that horse up to make sure everything that is in my power gets taken care of. I want to make sure his shoes are tight, He's comfortable, he's got to write this and write that. Write bridle, write food, write, I mean, anything that I have a say in, I go through that checklist. Mm -hmm. And if it's outside of that, there's nothing I'm gonna be able to do whether I'm nervous or stressed about it or not. So I honestly, to a fault and to the annoyance of so many of my competitors, I don't worry about it. We're just a few weeks away and uh, you're coming in as the reigning champion um, and the entire performance horse world is going to be watching this American performance horse this year. What do you think March 8th at Globe Life Field is going to be like? It's going to be intense. It's going to be, it'll be a lot of fun for sure. Um, you know, but it's, it's still going to have 24 hours in the day, right? So I'm going to go just soak it up, do the best I can and it, I, I would tell you the pressure for me in that situation is downright amazing has done so much. Uh, if he ends up being the one that I use, the, the, only, the only stress that I would have is if I make him look bad. 
that would be it because I don't I don't ever want to do anything to take away from what an amazing horse that is and really the other one customized my dreams the same way I mean that horse the yellow horse got me qualified for the run for the million this year and run off and he's been pretty dependable so if there was if there was any stress or pressure for me it's gonna be that I would let those horses down yeah, well, uh, 608000 uh, in lifetime earnings for Downright Amazing. Yeah. I feel like YouTube kind of got it figured out. Yeah, he's, I mean, again, like I said, that horse is one I feel like anybody could have rode. But, I mean, I look at that number and I go, man, if I hadn't been in a neck brace there, what could that number have been? Hmm. You know, if I hadn't, the, the, the run for the million this past year, I did a terrible job running and stopping that horse. He ended up third place. But if I had done what I needed to do, you know, maybe he'd have won that, and then that number would have been over a million bucks. So mm. that's that's probably the the one spot that could potentially be some stress for me is letting that horse down. Gotcha. Well, man, I can't thank you enough for having us out today. Um, wish you the best of luck at the American this thank year. You. We'll be rooting for you, and uh, of course for the rest of 2024. Well, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you.